Hi, this is Destiny from This Week's and welcome back to another video in the blog app using Django and React Chairs. In this one, we'll get started creating the models that we will be needing for the blog app. That is what we'll be doing. Hopefully, you will enjoy the video and learn something new. So, let's get started. Begin by opening up your code editor and hop over to the API Models PY. And the very first model that you want to create will be called Category. And it should inherit from models.model which means we can go ahead and do things like add a title, which would take a model field of character field and character field must take the max length. So for this one, I'm going to say max length of this should be 100. I also want my category to have an image field so that I can upload an icon. That means I can say models.file field. And where do I want to upload these icons to? I'm going to upload them to a folder called image. How about if I don't want to upload icons, I just want to leave it blank. Then we need to add null can be true. Null can be true and also blank can be true. As simple as that. And finally, I need a way to professionally get categories. Instead of using ID, I will recommend we use slug. So there is a field in Django called slug field. And you can also go ahead and make the slugs to be unique. And if you want for now, let's say that a category can have a slug and it can also not have a slug. Okay. So if you, if you don't want to add a slug to the category, that is fine, but we will automatically fill the slug in based on the title. I hope that makes sense. So the very first thing that we need to return is the string representation of this category model. So define underscore underscore str and I'll pass in self in there and pretty much I will return self dot title. I believe I've explained this in the last video. And after we've done this, one more thing I want to do is go ahead, override the default save method, pass in self and also ax and keyword arguments. Okay. And now I want to check if self dot slog is equal to empty or self dot slug is equal to none. Then what do we want to do? Let's go ahead and say self dot slug should be equal to. Remember when we imported slugify, what it to do is it to pretty much slugify whatever text or sentence or word that you give to it. So what do we want to slugify in this case? Whatever the category's title is. This is how slugify works. So let's say the category title is entertainment and movies. And movies. As soon as you slugify it, what you will now get is entertainment dash movies, all in small letter. I hope this makes sense. Now, this is the way we can access this in the URL or something related to that. So that is what this Logify does. So now that we have added that, let's go ahead and save this model by returning super and the model name and also self. Then we save. But remember that for saving, you must add ax and quags. I hope this makes sense. So now that we have saved this, let's hop over to the next category. I will hop down here, but before we actually do that, let's create a new category that will count posts or rather not a category, but instead a new function or method that will count posts. But if I'm going to do this now, then I'll have to get you confused or I'll get you confused. So let's firstly create the post model It's to inherit from models the model. And we need a couple of things for the post model, like the title, the user, the profile, the image, the description and all that. So let's start with the user. This one will be models dot foreign key. And we want to go back to the user model. Now on the list of this user, what do we want to do? Let's delete all their posts. Okay. We also want to add profile. So models dot foreign key. And we want to link back to the profile like this. So now that we're here, we then say on the leads should be equal to models dot 
cascade okay and you can also add null can be true blank can be true so after adding the profile i will also add title title should be models dot character field and remember it's must take a max length i'm leaving it as 100 for now but you can increase that if you want i also need one for image now i can take this and put it over here also slug and put it over here so we don't have to type all this out below title i need the script shown the script shown like this this should be equal to models dot text field so models dot text field and the choices should be okay for now for now let me leave this out of here i'm going to do this later what i just want to say is null can be true and also blank can be true so this one is totally up to you if you want a user to be able to create a post and maybe create a title and come back later to continue creating the post then you could set this okay but if you don't set this a user has to write all their posts on a go as soon as they start i hope that makes sense and also that is it for now the next thing that i think we need to make a foreign key for will be the category so category i just duplicated one of the foreign keys so that i can simply change it over here after adding the category we also need another one for status but before we add the status let's create a top hole for it so i'll say status should be equal to then over here now i'm creating a top hole for active active and over here also we need active and also over here we need drafts for when a post has been drafted and also over here we need disabled the say boot all right there you go so now let's create status i will say status should be equal to models dot let's use a char field and the choices should go to the status topo all right remember you must always add a max length so i'm gonna say max length should be 100 that is what i'm just sticking away for now i hope that makes sense so after we've added all that what should be the default status in case a user didn't select any you could make it to be active as simple as that so um for now that is everything that we will be needing let me also add things like views likes so i'm gonna say views or view should be equal to models models dot integer field and default should be equal to zero okay so let's also add for likes so i'll say likes should be equal to models the many to many field and i'm using many to many field because i want one post to have multiple users that are liking the post i hope that makes sense so many to many field back to the user model and this is important also black blank should be true now null should be true does not work on many to many field okay so even if you add that it's not going to work one thing that you need to add to get rid of this error over here is to add a related name because we are referencing the user model here also and here so it's like confused it doesn't know which one to actually assign the user model to so now what we will simply do is add a related name so that it can easily distinguish i will say likes underscore user so this is just any name that i came up with you can actually call this banana okay it's up to you what you want to call that but i want to call mine likes underscore user notes just because i want to stick to naming convention you shouldn't call this banana okay so after we've added this that is pretty much it i already have my slug let me just add my dates this should be equal to models dot date time field auto now add should be true we are done so now if you want you can actually go ahead and take this things that we have over here these two and just pop it down there okay and now we are returning self the title for the products there is just one more thing that i want to add so let me add a class meta so that i can specify things like ordering of the posts which might be minus dates which means latest to be at the top ordering should be equal to that you can also say verbose 
Phoebus underscore name underscore plural should be equal to post. Now, I didn't do this one for the category, so obviously let's hop back there and do it. Now, what this will do is something that I'm going to show you later in the future. That is why I initially did not want to do it for the category. So, category. Well, what I will do now is just go ahead, comment this out. Comment, comment this out for now, just like that, so that it doesn't exist here. Then I'll show you guys. So, um, right now, I'm scrolling all the way to the bottom. Instead of having category over here, please, what you need is post. So if self does slug is equal to empty, we slugify the title. Exactly the same thing that we've done before. But guys, I want you to notice something. Imagine that two users in two different parts of the world that don't know each other created the same post with the same title at the same time. What is going to happen? Our platform will break immediately because we've said that we want our slugs to be unique. Now, why is a user creating the same identical slugs? That doesn't make sense. So there is one hack that I have for this. If you have any other better hack, please drop it in the comment section as I am looking for more of them. So I'm going to add this and say plus short UUID dot UUID. And I want to grab the first two from it. Now, in case you don't understand, this is what this would do. Let's say that the title is fetch me or how to how to code a blog app. Now, what that will pretty much do is append two random um, characters to the back to make it very unique. That is exactly what it will do. I will get rid of this now. And for now, we are done with the first blog post. The next thing that we could do is start creating the other ones. But before we do that, remember what I said I wanted to do in the category, which is create a method to count all the posts. So I'm going to define a new function called post underscore counts. You can also call this a method, okay? And I'm going to pass in self in here. And what we pretty much want to do is return posts.objects.filter where the category that is attached to the post is equal to this category over here that we are currently viewing. And what we actually want to do is count how many of those posts exist. Okay, so that is it. Finish. Nothing much. Now that we have done this one, let's go ahead and create the next model. It will be the comment model. So I will say class comment. And what should we add here? Let's say models the model. And over here, I'll say posts should be equal to models dot foreign key. And I'm going to add posts. On underscore delete should be equal to models dot cascade. All right. And also, I need to add name, email, comment itself, and all that. Now, if you don't want to type all this out, it's totally up to you. You could just grab it from over here. Okay. And put it down there. Simple as that. Okay, so title, instead of title, you could just change that to the name of the person making the comments. Instead of description, you could change it to the actual comment itself. Uh, I hope this is making sense. And duplicate the name and change it to email. Okay, and also you could duplicate the comments and change it to reply. Because there's going to be a functionality, perhaps, where a, where a post author can reply a comment or maybe in the future, we would even work with, with adding a feature where there could be an interactive chat session in the comments, something like that. So I'm adding reply, I'm adding comments, that's all good. And let's also add dates. And as you can see, we are done with this model. It's very simple. So the two things that I want to return will be these two things over here. And I don't want to type them all out because I already have them. So just copy and paste, simple as that. But instead of returning self the title, because obviously no model field called title exists here, instead you should return self dot post dot title. Does this make sense? It's as simple as that. So the next thing over here is ordering the the comments. This pretty much means bring the latest comments all the way to the top of the list and take the oldest all the way to the bottom. If you remove this the exact opposite thing will happen. And I want to call the verbos name of this comment. And I'll show you this later. 
So now that we have this, we have two more models to go. Let's create one here. So I will say class and I'll call this one bookmark. And this should be models dot model. And now that we have this two model, what we just need is the user, the post, and the date. So guys, from the comments, you see you can see that we already have the post and we already have the date. And also in the posts, in the posts, you can see that we already have the user. So you see, if you know your way around all this, you don't even need to type much code for things to work. Just like that, we've created this one. So now you can copy the string representation and the class meta and, you know, pretty much paste it down here. Changing this one over here to say bookmark. All right. I hope that makes sense. So now that we have done it, let's hop over to creating the last model in this series. And that will be the notification. Notification model, which we inherit from models dot model. A couple of things that we need will be the noti underscore type, which will be equal to. And what do we want to pass in here? Remember, it's a tuple. So we will say like. And over here also we pass like. So I need like, I need comment, I need bookmark. So like, comment, bookmark. Now, whenever someone likes our post or our article, we will actually throw a notification saying, hey, someone just liked your article. Same for comments, same for when someone bookmarked. Now, bookmarking is totally up to you. If you don't want to bookmark, you can actually get rid of that. But I just want to add it so you see how it works. Okay. I need the user. I need the post. I need the date. So take those three, put it down there. Apart from user post date, I need two more called type and sin. So down here, type should be equal to notes. It's still a character field. So even if you want, you can just duplicate one of this and change it to, uh oh, not that, not that actually. You know what? Let's just type it out. So type should be equal to models dot character field where the choices will be equal to the noti underscore type. And finally, sin should be equal to models. I don't even know if the sin is really needed. Yeah, for a notification, it's needed. Yeah. In case a user wants to mark a notification as sin and get it off the list. So yeah, let's keep it. Okay. So sin, then I'm going to change this to Boolean. And by default, a user should not be able to see the notification. So by default, it should be false. Now make sure that you're adding a max length to the character field. Remember that is a must. Now that you have this, we need two fields over here. Just take the two of them and put it down there. Okay, self.post.title should still work for me. Or even if you don't want to put that in, you could just say self.type, right? It's totally up to you. Or even if you want to join the both of them together, create an F formatted string, pass self.type, F formatted string, note it needs to be an F that has a string in its front. So you can write variables by opening up parentheses or braces in there, then calling whatever you want. So I can now say self the post, the title, and self the type. Does this make sense? But usually notification always have one issue or the other whenever the model get deleted. So I like checking for something. If self dot post, then I want to return self dot post the title and also that else I want to just return. Let's return notification. So return notification. All right, that is pretty much it. You can see this is everything that we have. Now I want you to open up your terminal and I want you to hit Python manage py make migrations. And I also want you to hit Python manage py. Hold on and type migrate. There you go. All good. And if you hop over to the admin, you will obviously not see anything because we need to register this models. So open up admin py. And if you want, you could go ahead, duplicate all this and start changing. 
So remember, we have category, we have category, we have post. Can you actually mention them without looking back? So we have category, we have post, we have comment. After comment, I think we have bookmark. After bookmark, we have notification. All right, that is pretty much it. You can remove this last one. And also even remove this register your model in. Okay, so with all that now, let's break out from our server and run it again and see what we have. Uh, there you go, our server is running. So right now, if we come over to port 8000, there you go, we hop into port 8000 and we pretty much come over to the admin section, which is this one over here. Now, can you successfully see post categories, comments, bookmark, notification profile, and users showing up? That is all good. So you may be asking, why is it actually arranged like this? And why do we have icons? That is why I have provided you with my Jasmine settings. My Jasmine settings actually allow you to add icons and, you know, make your sidebar look really good. So for now, that is pretty much it. All the models seems to be working as expected. If there is something that you don't understand, please shoot email to desvis at gmail.com and we'll be more than happy to help you out. If you're looking to build better, modern, and professional websites even faster, then I would recommend that you check out Nest Block. It's an application that provides you with hundreds and hundreds of components ranging from Tailwind, Bootstrap, Boomer, Materialize, all the way to pure CSS for your next project. So you can use the link in the description below Nest and visit nestblog.app. That is pretty much it. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, mad love. Peace out.